Hello and welcome to worship on this day or time, whatever day or time you're joining us at. Um, I want to thank you for being with us and our videos for our YouTube channel of worship is literally just straight the sermon. So if you want more, please go to our Facebook page and watch our live stream. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter 8 verses 34 through 38. Listen for the voice of God. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is week three of our stewardship series, uh, the final week, because we have been going, whew, sorry, I got tongue, tongue twisted. We have been going through John Wesley's sermon, quote, The Use of Money. That's the title of it. Uh, and the reason for that is I wanted to touch us in with our Methodist roots and provide some still very sound theological financial input for us as individuals. If you remember nothing else from the sermon series, just remember the three major points. Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. This week, the final week, we are focusing on give all you can. If you haven't watched the other video, because I only have one other one, I didn't get the first week done, but if you, if you watch the other video, I do share a lot of John Wesley quotes, and I'm going to do the same this week. So let's start up with this Wesley quote from the sermon. But let not any man imagine that he has done anything, barely by going thus far, by, quote, gaining and saving all he can. If he were to stop here, all this is nothing. If a man go not forward, if he does not point all this at a farther end, nor indeed can a man properly be said to save anything, if he only lays it up. You may as well throw your money into the sea as bury it in the earth. And you may as well bury it in the earth as in your chest or in the Bank of England. Not to use is, effective, to, is effectually to throw it away. If, therefore, you would indeed make yourself friends with the mammon of the unrighteousness, add the third rule to the two preceding. Having first gained all you can, and secondly saved all you can, then give all you can. So let me bring you into a secret among people who do art as a hobby, or even art as a profession. Now, this is not just artists, other people qualify on this, but when they get new art supplies, be it a sketchbook, new pen, new paints, it's very difficult for most of them to begin to use those items. I mean, this sounds really stupid, doesn't it? The purpose of a new sketchbook is to fill it up, to use every single page, to do something good or bad in it. But the fear presented with new art supplies is the fear that I am going to waste it. You spent your hard-earned money on these extra things. I don't just want to do uh, doodles in the page. I want actual, viable, beautiful artwork. Wesley's impassioned words start with a plea to realize that just saving your money and not doing anything with it defeats the purpose of even having money. In the same way for the hobbies, if you don't utilize the product for fear of wasting the product, then there's no point in buying them at all. Uh, I've watched this with kids, my own, but also other people's kids, when they have money, if you give them cash. They always have these grandiose plans of what they're going to do with that money. But when it comes to spending it, they begin to realize that if they buy that candy bar, they're not going to be able to afford that toy. Rarely does this mean that the child never spends the money, but in adults, I've often seen that. They don't spend the money then, so it never gets used. With this week's topic, Give All You Can, one of the first concerns that I had was, how do we know where to give our money? Another concern I had was, 
What about people who tend to give away all their money with very little thought to where that money is going? And Wesley clearly states um, that there is an order of priority. At least this is what he lists. It's to guide us. Now, I know that the danger of these is that we'll think we'll already have it figured out, but it's surprising how often this simple list that he gives us gets messed up. So listen to Wesley's words. If you desire to be a faithful and a wise steward out of that portion of your Lord's goods, which he has for the present lodged in your hand, but with the right of resuming whatever it please him, first provide things needful for yourself, food to eat, raiment to put on, whatever nature moder moder moderately requires for preserving the body in health and strength. Secondly, provide these for your wife, your children, your servants, or any others who pertain to your household. If when this is done there be overplus left, then, quote, do good to them that are of the household of faith. If there be an overplus still, as you have opportunity, do good unto all men, and so doing, you give all you can. So the ranking of what to spend your money on, care for yourself, care for your family, care for your church slash church family, care for the others in the world around you. So four points. Care for yourself is being aware that if you aren't taking care of yourself so that you can work and do the things you need to do, or in the case of retired people, enough that you can live on and, and do the things that you want to do, um, then you won't be able to do the first two lessons. You won't be able to earn all you can. You won't be able to save all you can. Uh, you won't be able to help others if you don't take care of yourself. Now, remember last week we talked about not spending money on extravagance in order for us to save things. And here Wesley says, hey, you need to buy what you need for your job. So if you need that expensive pair of boots and you buy that expensive pair of boots, it's not a waste of your money. It's, it's essential, right? Care for family should sound self-evident, right? Uh, we want to take care of those we love and provide for their needs. However, I, can t I can't tell you how many times I've seen people or met people who buy unnecessary things for themselves while their children don't have enough school supplies. Our, our basic responsibility is to provide for those who we love. Re retirees, again, this is looking over your family in love, helping them with the necessities that they need. Um, I know all of you who have grandchildren care about them, but I've also met people over the years who don't care and, and refuse to help their grandchildren. Now, I want to make it clear, and I think Wesley would make this distinction too. I'm not talking about adult children or adult grandchildren. Right? Sometimes the right thing to do, especially with adults, is to have a limit and say, look, I've helped you, but that's as far as I can go. Uh, but I want everybody to understand that those that cannot provide for themselves that are in our families are our responsibilities, be this children, uh, people with disabilities, you know, all sorts of, of markers in that. Care for your church and church family is one that I see people struggle with all the time as well. They may like me as a pastor, but they don't want to give money to the church because of something that has happened in the past. Or they assume that the budget needs of the church will be met by others. Wesley is clear. Taking care of your church, both the budget and the people, are your responsibilities. The church budget enables the staff to help people. Church budget enables the ministries to happen on campus. Part of our responsibility to each other is to build up the church so that we can be help for more people. So your giving, for instance, in, in my case, enables me to be at the clubs for the school three, sometimes four days a week for kids who will never have that experience, right? Um, so these are ways that your, your dollars help more than just the people you know. Finally, is care for others in the world around you. After you've made sure that your immediate family is taken care of, after you're sure your church is taken care of, then move on to other organization. And I know this is a difficult one because Many of us are very generous. We want to help as many people as we can. Um, 
But how can we really be taking care of others if we're not taking care of the other things on our priority list? Uh, I know, uh, speaking from a ministry perspective, me competing with these global ministries, uh, you know, televangelists and so on, people give their money to them, but then they attend a local church and they don't help there. You know, it's very difficult when we can't realize and do ministry on the ground level, but, you know, the televangelist can buy another jet. You, you know, you see what I'm saying. So take care of the priorities first on the ground level and then move from there. Wesley goes on to give some guidance for how to know if we're giving for the right reasons uh, in any and all of these instances. And here's what Wesley says. First, in expending this, am I acting according to my uh, character? Am I acting herein not as a proprietor, but as a, stewardship, uh, as a steward of my Lord's goods? Two, am I doing this in obedience to his word? In what scripture does he require me to do so? Three, can I offer up this action, this expense, as a sacrifice to God through Jesus Christ? And four, have I reason to believe that for this very work I shall have a reward at the resurrection of the just? These uh, four questions, these criteria, are to help you choose how to give your money away. It is help, it, it's to help you look at your motives and see why are you doing this. Is it a selfish motive? You know, these questions are aimed at getting you to realize if you are being selfish. If you're getting praise and recognition for your giving now, Wesley would have you question the why part of giving. Uh, part of this, I think, is because, you know, you sh should you get praise for, for doing the basic needs of what it means to be a parent or a member of the church? Now, mind you, I'm not talking about receiving thanks. I'm deeply grateful for the giving that each of you engages in towards our ministries here at Mountain View. But what I mean is things like, if you're only giving so you can have your name on that building, are you really giving for the right reasons? Wesley backed all of this up with one more point. And uh, so if you've gone through all the questions and all of them seem to be good, he says to pray about it. Too often we rush to prayer first. We don't do the legwork and the thinking ahead of time. Wesley tells us to do the thinking ahead of time and then pray. And if you've gotten to this point and you pray, see what the Spirit says to you. See how your Spirit speaks to you at the same time. We've all learned that earning, saving, and giving all you can are basic parts of what it means to be a Christian in good faith. Taking care of others, providing for your family and the church, all of these things are key to how we grow in our faith. And through today's message, I've talked several times to taking care of your family, but I do want to talk about some practicals for taking care of your church. Uh, in the next few months, we'll be setting our 2024 budget. And this past year, we barely made it through. Things have been tight. There has been a lot of worry and concern over paying bills and paying salaries. And um, I tell you this not, as, not to bring anyone down, but to show how important it is to care for your church. In the past week, letters have gone out about stewardship, and I encourage you to read them and respond. And if you didn't receive a stewardship letter and would like one, just let us know. I want to bring up some other ways to also give besides uh, a, a tithing commitment. Some other ways is to give through your IRA or estate giving. Uh, one of the reasons we did so well this past year, comparatively, uh, is that we received a large bequest because of someone who passed away. And that large bequest helped us pay our bills through the summer and fall months. You know, giving in these manners can significantly impact the ministries of the church. Now, laws have changed around uh, giving in your IRA, and I'm not a finance guy, so uh, I don't know all those ins and outs, but we have some information in the, in the church that we can give to you. It's out in the foyer of the sanctuary. In this case, you can contact us by email. But there will be a letter going out about those forms of giving in the next month and a half to two months. We here at Mountain View are grateful for your continued support. And I invite you to continue to support our church and others that they might experience the love of Jesus Christ through our hands and our feet. Stay happy, healthy, and safe this week. Amen.